Welcome to Live at Five. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. We have a great guest today. Yeah, who's here? Mia Barron from The Wolves, the Woo! buzzed the about big Wolves. big hit off-Broadway show. Yeah. Beth, you didn't say the date. You love saying the date. It's December 18th. It's December 18th. I wrote it down. Thank you for writing it down. So how many more shopping days do we have? Well, we're one week away, right? Right, yeah. Wow, okay. Okay, are you working on that? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm going to start shopping soon. Uh, Diana, we have some news. Okay. Diana is a musical about... Princess Diana, not Diana Ross. Um, Thank you for clarifying. Actually, because they just announced Diana will be playing La Jolla Playhouse, and Emilio, our photographer, walked in my office and he went, oh, really, is that all they do now? That's why he talks, he talks slow. <laughs> and, what, and I said, I don't know what you mean by that. He goes, and he, he, thought, I, he thought they were going from a Donna Summer musical to a Diana Ross musical, but they're not. It's Princess Diana, who everybody loves. Princess of Wales. Yes, uh, and are, do you watch The Crown? I have watched The Crown. Oh, man. I have Season been known two to watch the of Crown. The Crown is amazing. I just finished it yesterday. Season two is like really amazing. And I'm excited for season three because I feel like they're going to get, I'm sure the Diana stuff's going to gonna come into it. Anyway, yes. this is the musical from the talented guys who did the musical Memphis uh, Jody Pietro and David Bryan, who won Tony's for writing Memphis, which also won the Tony for Best Musical, uh, directed by Christopher Ashley, who also, of course, just won a Tony for Come From Away, but he also directed Memphis. Um, So they did it actually, I saw a reading of this in July at Vassar Powerhouse. I begged my way into that to see. Who played Diana? I'm not telling, it's 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 embargoed information. I knew it. Uh, And anyway, they announced that it would be part of the 2018-2019 season at La Jolla Playhouse, which is also where Memphis started. And also where Christopher Ashley is the artistic director. One thing I will, not anymore, is he now? Oh, no, you're right, he is. You're right, he is. Um, You're right, because I just saw Summer, and he was in the program, (laughs) and he explained to me why Donna Summer is amazing. I didn't need him to explain it, but... um, (laughs) But the other thing I want to say is that this is an interesting show because one thing that might surprise people about Diana, the musical, is that it's a rock pop score. So ah. it's about the royals, but it actually uses all that 80s like sound. Like that. And it's really, that, that's one little tidbit I'm going to tell you. And the you. rest is embargoed. And other, the rest of the information is embargoed. <laughs> Until <laughs> when? I don't know. Until just highly At some confidential. Point. I don't know. So anyway, that's exciting. I That'll am- come to Broadway, so get ready. Yeah. I'm just Sounds saying. Sounds ready. I'm ready. Years from now. I'm ready. So we knew, we know that Taylor Trench is obviously going to be in Dear Evan Hansen, and now we have a date. Hmm. So Taylor is currently in Hello Dolly. I didn't Barnaby, need to look down right? to see that. Yes. Uh-huh. And so he's leaving that show on January 14th, and Charlie Stemp is taking over, as we previously announced, on January 20th. But get ready, because Taylor Trench will start in Dear Evan Hansen on February 6th, with Noah Galvin finishing up his run on February 4th. So there you go. Cool. New star. Uh, and Charlie Stump. I said Charlie Stump. Yeah, I know. But he's like again. he's a big deal over in London. People, he's a big deal. Right? People love him over there. He got an Olivier nomination. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Christmas Story Live was on last night. I was nervous about this. Um, it, You know, I hate negative news stories. and I don't want to spin it negative. But when you compare it to all the other live musicals, it actually got the lowest ratings out of all the live musicals that have happened. Now, of course... Christmas Story the Musical is not a brand name like Sound of Music or Grace. It's a musical that, you know, played on Broadway, got Newer great reviews. Newer musical. Uh, people know the original Christmas Story. And so it always kind of felt like, you know, I went to the set last week. Yeah. And it always felt like this is more like a traditional, old-fashioned musical. It's not like, who's going to sing Grace Lightning next? And who, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's more of a real story. It's a real musical. And I have to say, I haven't watched it yet. Because I had a holiday party to go to last night. So, Me too. And I'm wondering if maybe this is like, you know, maybe it's just weird timing for the ratings. When you know? did we get the DVR ratings? Oh, I can't, yeah. I mean, I can't wait to watch it. Believe me, I'm going to watch it. And I'm are you super. Gonna, are you going to tweet it, delayed tweet it? No, <laughs> that'd be terrible. <laughs> no, you uh, don't. I'm going to, but I'm super excited to watch it. And I just wonder if the, if it's a weird time of year to get people to sit down well, and pay attention to something. Well, all the other ones were around Christmas time, weren't they? No, they were early not true, in Beth. Grease Live was in January. Oh, that's Sound true. of Music was. So the, Sound of the most, was. so it got 4.5 million viewers, which by the way, four and a half million people saw a Broadway musical last night on TV. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> but the biggest ones ever were Sound of Music, which had 18.6 million Grease yeah. Live had 12.2 million, and The Wiz had 11.5 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, coming up, Jesus Christ Superstar on Easter Sunday, April 1st, and Rent Live in like a year and a half. Yeah, but how excited are you for Rent? I'm just saying. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear who's going to be in it. Uh, can Dowdy <laughs> Rivega be somehow involved, please? Yes, please. I don't know. Just in everything, actually. Just figure that out. <laughs> um, we have some new casting in Waitress. 
So Eric Anderson left yesterday. He's an original cast member. Yes. Today, Chris. And Benny Elledge is taking over as Cal. The newcomer. The cook. Uh, so he starts December 19th. And Sarah Bareilles, don't forget, is back on January 16th. I think of Cal as Mel from Alice. Similar. Right? It's Similar. like Mel. That's really Mel an old, flipping old in the burgers. Mel in the people. back. But Alice. Sure. Anyway, okay. uh, also you can find on the site, we announced our list of the top Broadway debuts of the year. We did. Topping the list at number one is Ethan Slater, SpongeBob SquarePants himself. And uh, go to the site and see if your favorites made the list. We also did a culture list, uh, which holiday movie should become a musical. Home Alone one, which, you know, Patrick and Paul, I did a video where I asked everybody their favorite childhood uh, of all the Christmas, Christmas story costs, and that was there. So maybe Patrick and Paul, just get on it. Get on it, guys. <laughs> Work on the Home Alone. Although they really like Home Alone 2 as well, so they might have to combine them somehow. Sure. Um, done. And then you can see what other movies did well. There's a red carpet challenge that Matt Roden did at Farinelli and the King, which is hilarious and beautiful to listen to. Did you watch that yet? Not yet. Catch up, Beth. There's a lot of singing, and it's really fun. Um, and photos from opening night. And oh, The Greatest Showman did a live commercial. Look I'm obsessed with The Greatest up. Showman, did you see everybody. His eyes light up? I'm obsessed with it. I've been listening to it all weekend. Uh, and singing it but they us. did a live commercial on Christmas Story Live, which was phenomenal, and you can watch that on the site. And oh my God, a surprise episode of the Royal Misfits, the Christy Altamore vlog. I'm ripping things up. It's a holiday episode. It's a holiday special. I haven't watched it yet. It's great. Okay, it's great. cool. So everybody should watch that. There's a secret about Derek Klenna you'll learn. Mm, mm. We like secrets. Okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Mia Barron. These artists will come together for only one thing. It's not a concert. It's not an award show. It's SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway. Go ahead, throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raves the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Sugar butter flour. Ben Brantley of the New York Times calls the Book of Mormon the best musical of this century. This was my fourth time seeing it, and they still had me at Hello, winner of nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. The Book of Mormon on Broadway. You got to get up For Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Welcome back to Live at Five. I'm Beth Stevens, and I'm here with Mia Barron of The Wolves, the most buzzed about off-Broadway play in a while. Oh, that's in exciting. Hey, Mia. That. Hi there. It's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, too. So, hey, you've done a lot of stuff at Lincoln Center. I have. Lincoln Center is actually one of the theaters that I've had the privilege of working at more than almost any other theater in New York. I love it there. I did... Uh, one of my first jobs out of graduate school was understudying, um, and it was it was at Lincoln Center in this uh, show with Alan Alda called QED. QED, and it was an amazingly great understudy job. It's because about Richard Feynman, right? Yes, exactly. And um, the great physicist that everybody should know about. It's true. And Alan, it was basically a one man show, and then there's a one scene at the end with a young student, and Alan Alda, who's the nicest guy in the world. Uh, so I understudy not Alan Alda, but the young student. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was an amazing job because basically it just he just wanted to to sort of chat before the show to get him warmed up because oh. he talked to the audience mainly. So so me and Kelly Overby, who played the role um, and the stage management staff, we would just hang out with him. Yeah, and like an audience with Alan Alda. Yeah, it was night. so lovely. That was my <laughs> job. So that was my first Lincoln Center job. Um, and then, yeah, I got to do uh, Coast to Utopia. Kind of an important job. Which was very exciting. Thing to be a part of. So it feels good to be back there. 
Yeah, I, I love it there. It feels like a family. We gotta talk about the wolves. So, this is nine young women. Not that you're not a young woman. Well, I'm. <laughs> but you play the soccer mom. I do. I, I play it's the. It's a team <laughs> of young high. They're supposed to be in high school, but they're just like. Yeah, they're close to college age. Yes. Yeah. And you are the soccer mom. Tell me about being with these young people every night. Um, I was described in one thing as the only adult actress, which made me sound like a porn star, but I. <laughs> I, uh, um, I think you should definitely put that in <laughs> I'm an adult actress. Um, yes, uh, it is really, not to be trite, but it is really inspiring and moving to, to be around them. It's an extreme extraordinary group of young women. They're fiercely talented and they're very loving to one another. They really are incredibly close and they take such good care of each other. They're a team. They are a team. And I got to say, you know, I, I, I've been acting a long time and I, I still feel like I'm connected to what I love about acting and what I love about theater. But, but it, it has been, it has sort of renewed it in a different way to be around them because their experience of it is so heightened and pure, and there's not a lot of the other stuff that comes into cloud it as you get older and jaded, jaded, and <laughs> give me a cigarette. <laughs> um, so it feels very, uh, yeah, it, it feels dreamy to be with them. And How do you describe this play? Because I find it a little bit difficult to describe it and get people excited about it because it is exciting and it's different from other plays, but it's hard to describe that succinctly. Yes, it is different <laughs> from other plays. Um, it's an extraordinary piece of writing, uh, and so this is Sarah Delap. This is Sarah Delap, who wrote it. Finalist for it. Yes, and she was ex extremely young when she wrote it. I mean, I think twenty four when she wrote it. Now it's been a few years, um, and uh, it's a it's a portrait of a, a high school soccer girls soccer team, um, and it's unusual in many respects. I mean, one, it's uh, it's all young women, and it's all about them and not about their relationship to men or boys or anything. Right. It's their stories and their bodies in space. And it feels very real. There's overlapping dialogue. They talk about important things and trite things kind of in the same breath. Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, anyone who's been around teenage women <laughs> or, or girls or has a teenage girl, you know, everyone says, how did she? You know, it's written symphonically. It's written in kind of columns. So mm -hmm. the overlap is written in and it's extremely uh, dense and complicated. To look at it on the page, it looks very complicated. And it's actually what they've done to achieve that level of synergy and naturalism is very complicated. Um, but it feels v v extremely lively and lifelike. And you think you're gonna just sort of um, understand some things about them as a team. They only have their team numbers, not their names. But as it goes, e it's it's incredible how quickly you feel like yeah, you know each of these quickly. girls. Yeah, um, and as the only adult, I come in at the end of the play. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but it's why. not the happiest thing in the world. And uh, it's I think it's all that's also an incredible piece of writing that she's created this universe with all young women, and then she brings in this only adult actress. Yeah, adult, I'm and, just going to uh, call you <laughs> yeah, an adult actress. So I was fortunate enough to do a piece on the girls of the, the wolves, not the adult, and I asked them all kind of fun questions, and I didn't get to ask you, so I'm going to ask you. Oh, God, I'm not prepared. I know. Okay. I know you're not prepared. Um, so what we did was Caitlin McNaney, our photo director and great photographer, shot them, you know, and... and I saw and it. It was, a, it was an exciting shot. I got shot. to ask them some, some stuff, so... Your name and number. You don't have a number. And you don't, do you have a oh, name? Oh, my name and I thought you wanted my phone number just now. I, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if I can give it on there. <laughs> um, I don't have a number. All the girls have the their There's you know player team number, numbers. team numbers, but I don't have that as I'm just the soccer mom. The soccer mom. In your mind, does she have a name? Uh, oh, well, in my mind, I have two two kids in the play, one of whom you don't see. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, the my other daughter, I know her name, but I actually have not thought about my own name. Is that terrible? Yeah, you don't do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting kicked off on <laughs> Your age in the show or in real life? My or, age or in the show? Range. I, I, I think she's probably, you know, early to mid-40s in the show. That's my guess, yeah. Your hometown, this is you for real. Me for real. Yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, Brookline, Massachusetts. Right outside of Boston. We have a question about that, which we'll get to in okay, just a okay. second. Sport of choice. I cannot play any sport. I mean, I was thinking about this, that if I was their age when the show was out and I was, I, I wouldn't be able to do this. I mean, I, I'm so insanely uncoordinated. So it's very lucky that now I'm the adult actress <laughs> because uh, I, I, I never played sports. I was always the drama nerd. I Your sport always of choice is 
Yes. Not applicable. Not applicable. Favorite team? The Wolves. I mean, you know, I grew up with the the Celtics. The Celtics. (laughs) So, uh, you know. Moment you knew you wanted to be a performer? I mean, it's embarrassing and cheesy, but I, 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 this is what I remember. I, I, I think I was always in love with the idea of the sort of direct communicative experience in a room with people. And that and is so cheesy. <laughs> so, so I remember early on, like really young, like when I was four, I was like, I want to be a singer because I want that experience. But I can't sing at all. I'm horrible. <laughs> and I, and I really figured that out early. So then I think right after that, I, I thought, ooh, acting. And as soon as I was in a little children's theater class, and I experienced what that was and the camaraderie and the collaboration and, and the energy of that I, I, I was hooked. You were hooked. Early. You were in. Early. Here's a question I, I really liked the, that the answers I got was um, how do you psych yourself up before a performance? Because you're back there for a while. Well this performance is a, is a strange one. I mean I think it, different shows require different things. This is... Um, but I heard there are dance parties backstage. Oh yeah. Well <laughs> so again I'm entering the play in a, in a somewhat tragic circumstance which I can't totally reveal but um, so, uh, but luckily I have a lot of time after the show starts to uh, do my own vocal physical warm up and then kind of just focus on my own personal circumstances in the play. Mm-hmm. But before that, because I have so much time, I can just hang out and have a good time with the other actors in the play before they go on. So in the dressing room beforehand, it's totally it's delightful. It's a party. It's like full on dance party all the time. What is your current pop culture obsession? Oh my God. It, I'm kind of like a 90-year-old. Like, I... I <laughs> <laughs> knitting. Knitting is my pop culture obsession. <laughs> Not applicable? Mm-hmm. I'll have to ponder that. Come back mm-hmm. to me on that. We'll, we'll come back. Okay. We will come back to Okay, you. okay. Your favorite stage credit. Just pick one before the wolves. Oh, God. Just one. Just one. Um, well, w- I would say one is, is, is something that uh, I created with two friends from grad school that Lee Silverman directed that um, a, a show about Director three Lee Silverman yes, she's so and you great. wrote it as well we wrote it and we performed it we did it at the Soho rep space it was called big times it was a three woman vaudeville piece oh, that holds a special place in my heart because uh, we that's created it together I like that. <laughs> uh, your dream role and Alec also from our Facebook live friends is asking for your dream role oh oh someone else's um, well this is what I would say about that because I think I, I thought maybe you would ask that, <laughs> and right. I did ponder. But I've been known to ask. That. I know, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say for me, uh, the thing that I dream about is the writers that I get that I would get to. You work with. You have done a lot of original work. Yes, I will say. which I really, really. So who do you want to write your love? Role? I mean, put um, it out there. Okay, now. all right, all right. Tony Kushner, are you watching? Um, Tony Kushner Ter- is a regular <laughs> viewer of Live. I thought so. <laughs> Terrell McCraney, um, Bruce Norris, I've worked with a lot. I love him. Mm. Carol Churchill. Um, I, you know, I, I, I swing in for the fences. That's yeah. a sports term, by the way. Maybe. Oh, I don't. I wouldn't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you spend your day off? Well. I have a kid, so I spend my day off being a mom. <laughs> being a mom. <laughs> you know, uh, well, I, I sometimes do have a little bit of time off when she's at school. So I, I, I do occasionally, like, exercise sometimes or eat. Um, Exercising and eating. <laughs> Very <laughs> popular <laughs> answer to this question. It's, just, it's like family feud. And then this is, a, this is a question everyone answered, all the other team members. They did. Hashtag to describe the wolves. And they all answered it? Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Um, God, girl frenzy. Uh, girl frenzy. Uh, <laughs> That's why it sounds hysterical. Actors. That's too hysterical. <laughs> That's just what came to mind in my girl free frenzy, associative I like way. It. All right, people are loving this play. They're loving on you. Kurt asks, says from he's from long ago and remembers you from the Boston Children's Theater in Brookline High School. No, wait, what's what? His name? Kurt what? Miller. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Kurt. Where, what so were crazy. your defining moments on the stage way back then? That's so crazy. You I have t- followers. Oh, wow. Them. I feel so. <laughs> that and Tony Kushner. <laughs> <watching>. <laughs> Hi, Tony. <laughs> um, I, wow. Yeah, I grew up outside of Boston, and there was a children's theater, just a community theater. And um, I, it was a formative, you know, I, I, I felt what it was to be treated as a, artist and a professional even at a very young age they took it very seriously and um, so I think my formative time in the children's theater because I gotten to play a lot of the ingenuity parts which I was never very good at or like that much secretly <laughs> like I played Cinderella I played Snow White and I was like I don't and then I got to play the Wicked Witch 
in Sleeping Beauty, and I was like, We're oh, learning a lot about you character. Right <laughs> 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 I, I, I remember thinking that was a formative moment. Um, but yeah, I was always heavily, heavily, that was my You got the juicy roles, though. Family and community. Whether yeah. it's The Witch or Cinderella. I did. Well, I started off in the bit parts. I, I, wor- I mean, I, I kept at it. <laughs> Spear carrier. Yes, yes. Then the next year, yeah, you just move yeah. up. You just move up. I was like a, I was a skater in Hans Brinker and the Silver Skates. You know, I, I, wow. I had some, I had some small parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone needs to go see the Wolves. When is it playing until? Uh, just till January seventh. So Do you come think see. this might make a move to a bigger house? I, I mean, that would be incredible. I, I don't exactly know what's going on with that, but you know, uh, I, I think we. It all deserves a wide audience. It's a really special play. Yeah, it's I don't even know how to describe it, but it's just something, I walked in not really, I didn't read too much when I walked in, I didn't have expectations, and I was blown away. Yeah, it's an extraordinary, it's, it's, it's good a stuff. unusual play, it was so beautiful. Hashtag girlfriends. <laughs> oh God, this I'm is my never going to live that one down. interviewing an adult actress, and I'm so <laughs> happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, go see the wolves, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Thank you.